All right, folks, welcome back to yet another episode of Fresh Juice, an indie game podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tommy Fresh, and joined as always, it is Matty Juice. What's up, everybody? Episode 30. We did it, Tommy. We oh, did my it. God. It's oh time to retire. Goodness. See you later, folks. 30 and done. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. We're aiming for 3,000, actually. Um, and then done. And yeah. then done. That would be Even a lot of years, know. right? That's a lot of years. Well, I mean, unless we start doing the podcast every day. That's true. Know? That's true. Yeah, that would be should. wild. That would yeah. be wild. We, oh, couldn't, yeah. we couldn't review a game every day. Or could we? No, no. I mean, I'm sure it's possible. But if, if that was all we were doing, I think we could do it. Yeah. But I would also probably, like two weeks in, I'd hate myself. So Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah my yeah. My eyes would burn out of my head mm-hmm. i think but we do have a great show for you all we're going to be talking about a, a an early access game you know we don't do a lot of those but we figured that this one uh was pretty hype and and interesting and looked very cool and it was worth kind of diving into because it seems like a pretty worthy endeavor by the devs and it is uh, no rest for the wicked which is developed by moon studios and published by private division currently early access on steam uh, it's thirty nine ninety nine and ten percent off right now till May second. So if you're interested in getting in on the early access, you can get a little bit of a discount. This is the higher range of most of the indie games that we talk about, but uh, I think we'll we'll get into probably why it is that uh, high. But before then, what's going on, Maddie? What's new with you? I, we we haven't really talked much this week. What's what's going on? Yeah, um, no, I mean everything's been been good, you know. Uh, uh, we had a good weekend, you know, Saturday, played a good amount of games, playing a little Once Human, some other games, tried, tried a new demo for a game that I've never played before, so I'll talk about that uh, in the rec room. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Saturday, went to go visit some family, uh, my, my wife's grandma, so that was cool, you know, had some good Italian food, all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, lasagna, you know. Ooh. And I got to say, you know, like, you know, I mean, I know you know, Tommy, but for the listeners, like, Maria and I don't do that well with dairy these days. <laughs> and we had basically ran out of, like, lactate pills that we usually take when we have dairy. Uh, and we get there, and, like, what had happened was we get to her grandma's house. We were supposed to be waiting for the food. Like, Mar- Maria's parents were supposed to bring the food there. Um, but there was a miscommunication and they were basically going to be like two to three hours late. So, uh, what we ended up doing was like, uh, her aunt ordered pizza. So we had pizza and then when the food got here, that was lasagna. And then when we got home, we decided to make a pie. So we had all that without the lactate that we require. So this morning was pretty rough, (laughs) but I gotta say, I would do it again in a heartbeat. (laughs) You know, I'll weather the storm if it means more delicious italian food i'll do it but um yeah so that's you know it was it was an interesting start to the week but i'm here i'm ready to talk about some games what about you tommy how was everything going uh you know i mean <laughs> my dietary issues are always all over the place wasn't too bad this weekend <laughs> though uh you know today was was actually you know my fiance and lady fresh and i are are, are trying to become morning people Cause we're not mm. right. She gets up, she rolls out of bed, starts working cause she works from home. And then I get up whenever I do. And then I go to work because I don't have to be anywhere except when I choose to be there, which is nice, but it would be nice to also start earlier. So that I'm done earlier. And so today was the first day of that woke up, made smoothies, you know, uh, they were good. They were very good. And like, you know, throw some Greek yogurt in there, which I don't like yogurt. We've talked about this. I don't like the smell or anything like that, but in the smoothie, it's actually ain't bad. It ain't bad. Extra protein, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, but it was, that was good. But you know, I had a pretty eventful weekend on, on Friday. Uh, the game that I recommended last week, veiled fate, that board game, uh, brought it over to my sister's apartment and then five of us played. It was actually a ton of fun because we had only played two player at that point. And with five people, it was freaking awesome. And we, we had like a, you know, my sister did like a cheese board and stuff like that. And I brought over, I found, folks, I found the the 2019 World Cheese Awards winner. 
I've been looking for it forever. So it's it's by this creamery in in Oregon called okay. uh, Rogue Creamery, and they make it every year. This, this isn't the one from 2019 that I bought. It's it from this past winter or whatever. Um, it is a blue cheese. If you like blue cheese, you know, stick around. It, it's going to be cool. If you don't, whatever, I understand. <laughs> but it's a blue cheese wrapped in pear liqueur soaked Syrah leaves, which is like a grape. And uh-huh. it's just super creamy. It's not even that funky. Like, it, you know, it's not one of those really funky blue cheeses. It was just like, oh, it was like, it was so worth the insane amount of money I paid for just a little bit of a wedge of it. Uh, yeah. But had that. That was cool. On Saturday, I went to a baby shower for boys. We don't need to talk about that. It was weird. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was more baby of just boy a, shower. It was just a hangout uh, with one of my buddies who's having a baby soon. Um, but it was for whatever reason framed in the idea of being a baby shower, uh, which I believe is mostly for the mother of the the baby being born. But what do I know? And then on Sunday, I played another uh, Flesh and Blood Pro Quest, which was trying to get into Pro Tour. This one did not go well. And I had to really look within myself because I was feeling some things. I tell you that. And I, I realized that, you know, I hate bad winners, you know, who rub it in your face when they win. Oh, that happened. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. And it was somebody right. I don't even, I don't particularly like anyway. And yeah, cocksucker. Yeah. I mean, even, t- yeah. you know, I quote said, tell the people on your podcast, you got juiced, which not this one. <laughs> Funny enough, well, I am telling. I'm mentioning on this. Wait, podcast. that's what they said to you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh yes. Oh my god. And I took with everything within my being to not just be like, ah, <laughs> just like it was. It was brutal. And that was round one. I lost. And then round two, I get paired up against Pro Tour winner Michael Fang, who is an absolute sweetheart. Yeah. And um, I I actually had a good matchup into him, but ran into some bad variants and lost. Of course, we always talk about. Me and him, he just is always destined to beat me. That's all right. He's the Pro Tour winner. I'll take I'll take those licks. And then after that, I was like, all right, I'm dropping out of this tournament. I'm 0-2. And, and called it early and hung out with my fiance. And that was that was my weekend. But yeah. well, fuck that guy. How about that? Yeah, yeah, actually, fuck yeah. Him. Fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah. Hope he gets juiced. Yeah, let's let's go. We just got demonetized on fresh juice. <laughs> Wait, we were never monetized to begin with. And that's why we're always bring we're making it real here because we're not yeah. monetized. But yeah, we're not uh, run by the man. Yeah, unless you want to sponsor us, then we'll say whatever you want. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get into some news. And the biggest news of all time is the Fresh Juice Discord. As always, it's available. Anybody can join. You just go into the the show notes or wherever the description of the video. You'll find it. You'll hang out. You'll talk about insane Baltro score. You'll talk about. Hell divers nonsense. You'll talk about whatever you want in there. And yeah, yeah, please check it out. Yeah, just shared a great game deal too. We share game deals. Any, anytime I see one, I'm posting it in there. So the Switch people in the in the Discord server today got a little little notification there that there are tons of indie games on sale in the eShop until uh 423. So by the time you're listening to this episode, that sale will be over. But if you were in the Discord, you would have known about it. So join the Discord for sure. Um, and what, what else we got next in, uh, the, in the news segment here, Tommy? Well, I mean, I guess a good place to go into here is, and it's probably why there was a big sale on the Switch, was uh, the Nintendo Switch just had their indie showcase, you know, shortly after the Triple yep. I, that which we talked about last time. Um, not a ton of huge announcements here. Uh, that were announced that like we didn't already know about, but you know some some nice spotlight on Animal Well, which comes out May 9th. I think we should play that one actually. I, I do want to play that one quite a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, Stitch was coming out. Sticky Business. Uh, they were talking about Europa. And, you know, it's just it's just nice. I mean, like in terms of the triple A kind of companies pushing indie games. Nintendo has always been pretty good about it, I think, especially since the Switch is such a great platform for it. Uh, if only they can just, you know, 
come out with some better hardware as we had talked about in the past but we saw some stuff like cat quest 3 and and uh, lorelei and the laser eyes so not a whole lot of stuff that's necessarily switch exclusive or anything like that but pretty cool to see anyway and that's probably why there was a, a sale was there anything that you saw that yeah. jumped out to you? I know you mentioned the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, so there's uh, – I, I was thinking that that was a new game because it's like a roguelike uh, Ninja Turtles game, which I thought was cool. But apparently it's been available on mobile, on iOS already. It's part of Apple Arcade. But I saw a lot of people excited about that coming to the Switch. And, yeah, there were two other games that I thought looked pretty interesting. Um, first off is a game called uh, Bzz. It's, like, it's B Z Z Z T, uh, so it's a it's a like a retro kind of platformer um, that looks pretty cool. It's like a two D platformer coming out this summer. Um, the gameplay looked pretty sweet. There was like a forty five second trailer. It seemed pretty smooth. It actually kind of reminded me, like fluidity wise, of like when uh, I played like Lone Fungus two. We mm-hmm. did like the demo of it uh, for for that Steam uh, like demo event that they were doing. So that looked pretty cool. Definitely recommend checking that out. And then one of them that just, I don't know from a gameplay standpoint, like how much fun it's going to be, but I thought it was a really cool concept is this game called shim S C H I M. It's a 3d platformer where you basically, uh, interact with the world through the shadows that are cast in the world. Um, so I definitely recommend going and checking out some of the gameplay. It seemed pretty interesting. Like, watching right now like there uh there's a character in like a kind of a playground area they're jumping from the shadow of a tree to like the shadow of like a jungle gym then to the shadow of like a like a swing and i guess they're trying to get to like the end of the level it's kind of hard to tell what the goal is but it seemed like a pretty cool game so and i've never heard of either of these before uh or shim uh but (laughs) definitely recommend uh, going and checking them out if uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff. But yeah, other than that, there wasn't anything that I saw that I was like, man, this is amazing. It was just kind of these, you know, that's typically with these Nintendo events. I'm just like, oh, that, that looks cool. Like, I'll see what the reviews are like when it comes out. But nothing uh, nothing that really jumped out. It wasn't like the, uh, the Triple I event. The Triple I event, I was like, you know, jaw on the floor for like half of it, I would say. Just like, oh my God, this is awesome. Uh, but yeah, still a good event. I, I'm glad Nintendo does it, and hopefully they keep doing it, which I'm sure they will. Yeah, funny enough, when I was in high school, there was a teacher named Shim. I think it was short for something. I know it was short for something, but I don't want to. I don't want to dox him on 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 air. But his name was Shim, and he always wore like track suits, like mm-hmm. and literally Shim was the noise that he would make walking down the hall, like Shim, Shim, Shim. It was uh, it was kind of fun. Oh. So uh, I don't know if that's he's associated with the game at all. But uh, worth bringing up anyway, I tell you that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but Xbox is also getting into the indie game uh, like showcase thing, uh, which they've done before. What's going on yeah. with Xbox? Yeah, so next week on April 29th at 1 p.m. Eastern, Xbox is doing their, their next ID at Xbox, they call it, the digital showcase. So it's going to be... Uh, a bunch of indie games. Uh, I know 33 Immortals is going to be showing some uh, some new stuff there, which is a game we were excited about last episode. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like a 33-player Hades, it seems like, kind of dungeon crawler, roguelike sort of thing. Um, so excited to play that one. And, yeah, it's uh, uh, this also coincides with a sale that's currently going on on Steam, and I imagine on the Xbox as well, of the publisher sale that's happening um, so really smart, just from a marketing standpoint, the, all these all these companies doing their showcases right next to their sales. They know what they're doing. You know, they know how to maximize the profit. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It, it basically just says it's another batch of hotly anticipated indies for you to play across Xbox and PC. So I'm hoping we get some um, cool announcements of like Game Pass titles. Like I don't know if 33 Immortals will be on Game Pass, but that would be awesome. Uh, just make it more accessible to people. So, yeah, excited for this one. Curious to see, you know, how it goes. I I, I think it's going to be probably on, like, the level of the Nintendo one. I don't think it's going to be, like, the Triple I showcase, but you never know, I guess, with these sort of things. What are you thinking about this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's always good to get some more announcements and stuff like that, extra gameplay. Uh, there is going to be some new details on Dungeons of Hinterburg, which we had talked about in an early episode. 
Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we had seen some of like the first gameplay and that one really piqued my interest, kind of felt like uh, this, like this, like uh, Breath of the Wild in the Swiss Alps kind of thing. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, would be interested to see if we get more info and more like gameplay on that. So uh, definitely yeah. excited for that. Now, you also threw in here something about I, this is a game I didn't even play El Paso Elsewhere. Yeah, I I've also never played this before, but I figured it was worth bringing it up uh, because El Paso Elsewhere is getting turned into a movie, and that just seems to be like I just wanted to kind of have a discussion of is this are we entering the golden age of video game adaptations to the screen, or well, I guess to to film and TV? Um, you know, we we obviously have had hits like Fallout and Super Mario Brothers movie. Last of Us, um, I know like Twisted Metal had a show as well, and I know like Borderlands, Minecraft, Gears of War, uh, they're all in talks for like movies, there's upcoming movies for them, there's also like a Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell cartoon, Vampire Survivors cartoon, Golden Axe cartoon, like it just seems like we're finally, um, you know, we're finally getting into the golden age, I guess you could say, for years, right, these video game adaptations have been pretty terrible overall, I would say. Um, but now it seems like they're a lot more consistent. I don't know if that's because now the people that are making the movies have probably also played the games. Maybe that was not a, the case before, back in the day. Um, they just kind of saw an opportunity to make some money and went with it. I don't know if that was how it was. But yeah, I just uh, just thought it was cool just to see this indie game that I've never heard of. I'm sure it's pretty popular from what I was seeing. Like People were saying this is like, the best first person shooter of 2023 that no one talks about. Um, But just cool to see like an indie game like this that, you know, we've never heard of is getting made into a movie. So like the possibilities are endless here. Um, So yeah. What do you, what are you thinking of this? Is there any, any game that you want to see get turned into a movie that maybe isn't that well known? Uh, Balatro. No. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, this, this game actually sounds awesome. Like I want to check it out. This is just the synopsis here. The game has players control a drug-addicted vampire hunter as he tracks down a blood-sucking ex-girlfriend who's set on ending the world. I mean, I'm I'm in with the movie. I'm in with the game. So that's yeah. obviously a really cool plot. So I'd well, love to check out the game and hopefully the movie at some point. Um, in terms of like games, man, oh, God. There's a lot that you can do and like really expand upon. I think, I, I think of something like Axiom Verge or something like that would be pretty neat. Um, and then like other, like even something like the cub would be a really cool yeah. game to see as a movie because it like felt like we were playing a movie. So I'm all for it. If it's done well, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I never played fallout, so I haven't really watched the game or, or watched the, watched the TV show yet. I know people are really loving it. You recommended it last week. Um, so like we're, we're getting to a point where like we, you just might get things that you like on screen, which is really cool. And it's better than like regurgitating like sequel after sequel, I think. So uh, I'm all for it, you know? So I'm excited. I'm definitely excited for the dredge movie, which we had mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago as well. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how that, works like what's the perspective for the dredge movie you know is it like the ship's captain like what what is it you know i've only played a little bit of dredge but um that's also i think a really interesting thing too is that like some of these games they work as a game how do they work like in film or tv you know um you know so yeah i mean even like uh a game like you know um vampire survivors like how is that going to work as a tv show right there's not really like a story you know i mean like i guess you can easily make a story from it right but like i don't think there's like any any can any like actual like canon material to base it off of right yeah that's an interesting one because that one's just like do whatever you want you have your characters and and just run with it uh dredge at least has like a storyline so it's just a matter of the perspective they go through. I have to imagine it could be some kind of horror genre. And then this El Paso game seems like it, it basically gives you the the framework of a really cool action horror movie. So, yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I'm I'm into it. You know, yeah, so. same. Yeah, keep them coming. 
Keep them coming, but I'll tell you what's going to keep me coming is no rest for the wicked, folks. This is the game that we're reviewing this week. It's on early access, um, <laughs> but it's it's a it's it's an isometric souls like basically. I think is probably the the basic way to talk about this. You 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 have your character. You start on the ship. You're kind of like uh, being smuggled by these pirates, and then you get attacked by the, I guess the inhabitants of the of, of your destination, and then uh, I forget what they're called. Is it the serum or, or you're the serum or something like that? Anyway, yeah. you get attacked. You learn how to play the game, and then you kind of get shipwrecked on the side of this this island, and then you start to explore and like fight enemies and figure out like this is actually really hard, and and you got to grind a little bit, and that's something that I did not think I needed to do initially. So. Uh, is there anything you want to add to like what this game is before we get into the gameplay? No, I think, I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, I will say, you know, it's early access. They are planning to add co-op and PVP at some point. So I'm sure that will change kind of how people feel about the game, but in our, the current state single player only. So that's kind of how we'll be talking about everything similar to like a souls, like, you know, typically single player, but yeah, no, um, what did you uh what'd you think of the gameplay, Tommy? Getting into that. Okay, so all right. For for the folks at home, I am I don't play a lot of Souls games. I think the only Souls like game was that I played was Elden Ring. And I'll tell you what, I was not like good at Elden Ring. I grinded a lot to get better than my opponents so that I could beat them easily. I did not like do any kind of skill based winning in Elden Ring and the same is true in no rest for the wicked. Now I kind of like the top down view here. You know, it, it reminds me of a lot of the dungeon crawlers uh, that I've liked. Um, you know, it is certainly very hard. Now I, I was finding it very hard to time like your, your parries and stuff like that. And also aiming your projectiles. I don't know if other people had a, a tough time with that, but I was having a tough time with it, but there's something about this game that did make me come back for more, right? Every single time I died, I wasn't like, oh, you know, fuck this game. I don't want to play it anymore. No, I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure this out because this is, this is unacceptable. Uh, this is, I'm being unacceptable right now. I need to lock in. And, um, I don't know how much locking in I really did while I was playing. I don't, I, I can't really say how far I got into the game. I will say that the amount of time I played, I should have gotten farther, but, that is okay. It's not my it's not my typical game. I'm still enjoying it. I did enjoy the gameplay. There is a lot to it. It didn't feel monotonous. It felt like you could give up on on one challenge to go try a different one really, like within in the game sphere. I liked that because there were a couple times when I was just like fighting this one guy and I kept dying, kept dying. And I was like, you know what? Let me go explore a little bit and see what's going on. And then I realized that you can like level up and stuff like that. That didn't even dawn on me. I was just like immersed in the gameplay, um, yeah. you know, right off the bat. Um, I don't mind. I, you know, to be fair, I did look at some people's reviews. I wanted to get an idea of like why some people liked this, why some people didn't, because if you go on steam right now, it's mixed. Right. And a lot of people are like, I don't like when your weapon breaks because all your equipment has like, you know, a, a life cycle to it, you know, not unlike you know, Breath of the Wild. I don't mind that. I actually, it, it's kind of an interesting challenge because you're like, all right, well, this is, this one's either working out or not working out and I got to figure it out and Maybe I go fix it. Maybe I go find something else. I don't mind that. It, it gives you something else to do in the game that isn't just like really tough combat. So mm-hmm. as far as the gameplay, I really enjoyed it. I like the the top down. I At first, I thought it was going to be an issue like navigating a little bit. Uh, and then I found it to not be an issue at all. The movement at first took me a hot minute to get used to because it feels very heavy, especially when you're in combat, right? You have a stamina bar that only shows up during combat. When you're not in combat, you can just run around as much as you want. It feels fine, but like it does feel heavy and and uh that that was tough to get used to. So, for the most part, I I like this gameplay. 
it, it has me wanting to go back for more. I do want to play more of this game. I want to kind of explore. I want to level up my character. And yeah, I, th- there's something really unique about it. I feel like that, that I don't know. It's scratching like an itch that it, it doesn't feel unlike Elden Ring. Now it's, it's weird because we're playing in early access, right? So, you know, this is a game that is not the, f- the full bananas or whatever. That's not a real saying, but <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's just not the full bananas. It's, it's maybe not half full... a bunch. Maybe, it's half a bunch know? right now, but you know, they're a little green. They're going to be yellow soon though, folks. And, and I think th- for that reason, I, I, I think it's actually a success on the gameplay for an early access game. Like I, if keeping that in mind, I, I am enjoying the gameplay, but I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are as someone who plays a lot of souls likes and you know this this could be more up your alley. Yeah, no, um, and I think like you have a lot of great insights as like someone that doesn't really play them because it's these are the types of games, and this I wouldn't say I'll, I'll get into it. I guess of like the specifics of like how this is different from a Souls game, yeah, um, and, and where it's similar. But um, it's interesting because like so these types of games aren't for everybody. So the fact that you're saying like you want to go back and play more is exactly the reason I love playing Souls Likes is because I, even when I'm I'm sucking, right? I'm just dying over and over. The next day I'm like, I want to play it again. Like I want to try to beat this guy or I want to try to get past this area, whatever it is. So yeah, for me, I actually didn't, when I was going into the game, I didn't realize how similar it would be to a Souls Like. Mm. I was thinking it'd be more on the dungeon crawler kind of side of things, just from the way it looks. And I agree, like, there's something about this game that um, uh, I was talking to some other people about it um, in, like, Twitch chat. I was watching some streams of it, and I was like, this game feels, it feels familiar and new at the same time, Um, where, uh, and I just think it's such a, like, a, it, 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 it really works well. Like it doesn't feel like I've done this before and it, but it also makes me want to explore. So I think like from, um, you know, from the souls like perspective, it has some elements of like, like you were mentioning, like the combat is, can be brutal. You know, you really need to take your time with the combat. It has a very similar, um, kind of like stat system to like a, a souls game where you're going to be leveling up strength or dexterity or um, your health, um, you know, things like that. Your, your, your intellect or your faith, um, you know, that it's very similar to a souls game in that way. Um, you also do have kind of these little save points, similar to like sites of grace from Elden ring or bonfires from the souls games. Um, so it does have those similarities there, but really the biggest difference, like the thing I noticed first probably as being someone that plays a lot of Souls games is typically when you die in a Souls game, which happens a lot, you drop your currency, whatever, your souls, whatever you want to call it, what you know, the runes, um, and you have to go back and acquire them again. So it kind of, it, it doesn't really force you to go back to where you died to like face that boss again or face that enemy again. Um, but it encourages it. This game does not do that. You don't need to go back to where you died to pick up anything. Um, so that was something like at first when I realized it was kind of a Souls sort of game, um, I was going back to the area where I died and looking for like, oh, did I drop something? Did I drop anything? No. Um, so this game really, like, I think that's a huge difference because when you're, um, you know, you're failing at something, you're, you're dying over and over, you can just decide when you spawn back in, I'm going to just go the opposite direction. And I'm going to just try something over here, which I did a few times where I was like, screw this guy. Like, I am not ready for this. I'm going to go in the, this opposite direction. And I don't have to worry about picking up something or losing anything. Um, so I, I really like that about the game. It makes it, um, you know, it makes it uh, a little bit less intense of a Souls game um, when you're when you when that sort of stuff happens. There's really no penalty that I know of from dying, um, other than maybe durability sort of stuff. Uh, and you brought up you brought up durability as well. And um, this is something uh, I'm not going to take credit for for the idea. It was something in that same Twitch stream that the streamer was talking about, where basically people, I guess, have complained, like you mentioned, about like the durability of weapons and armor and things like that, and why is that in the game? Um, and he was explaining, he actually is working on a game himself, that um, it's this is like an intentional friction system, is what they're called. So like 
uh, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's like your weapon durability or anything that's going to cause any sort of friction, maybe a, like a level cap for certain accessing certain areas or whatever it might be. It's basically they, the developers need to find a way to balance like how many unfun things can be in this game to make the reward feel even better, which is kind of the whole idea of a souls like, right. Is like, you have to go through all these unfun little things, but then once you beat the boss, you feel completely rewarded from, from doing it. So it's kind of these like intentional friction systems that yes, like you mentioned, you know, gets you to try new weapons and do strategies, things like that. But it also adds to like the value of you winning uh, at the end of the day. So I, I enjoy systems like that. I think, you know, there was a lot of complaints when it came to Zelda that there mm-hmm. was like a, they added that durability system. I love that. It got me to try out so many different weapons that I had never tried before different strategies, just be silly with it, which is like the point of a Zelda game. Um, so I, I enjoy systems like that. So I, I like that about this game. Um, and then one big thing about the gameplay of this game, which I have never really seen um, in a game like this before, is it kind of has this dynamic like day system, day night system that will, and I know that doesn't sound too interesting, but basically, every day in the game, the world changes. So, uh, you know, you might be in a certain area one day, and you come back the next day, and there's different enemy types there. The chests have respawned that are there, so you can loot them again. Uh, there's the resource nodes. You can mine, like, you know, uh, copper and iron and things like that. Um, you can even dig up things. Like, those will be back as well. So I was watching a stream how this came up was this guy was in like the starter area and there were like wolves everywhere. And I was like, how, like I was just in that area. There was nothing there. Um, And that's what he explained. He was like, oh, it has like this dynamic system where every day in the game, um, the world will change. And it actually kind of tells you that in the beginning, but I didn't know what that meant. I was like, oh, it's got like a weather system or something like, oh, that's cool, you know? But no, this like, it adds to the replayability of the game, which is is awesome because that is fundamentally different than a Souls-like game. Um, So typically in a Souls-like, right, or a Souls game, I should say, you go, you you, uh, uh, fight something. Um, When you die, or if you go sit at like a save point, those enemies respawn in the same exact spots, right? So you know, you can understand patterns that way. This game, you might get used to a certain pattern, and then the next day comes, and it's different enemy types there. You have to treat it totally differently. You might have to use different weapons to get through certain things. So I really enjoyed, like, if if you guys can't tell, I I enjoyed the gameplay quite a bit with (laughs) this game. Because it was very, it, it, like I said, it felt new, but uh, but also familiar at the same time. Um, and then there's some other cool systems in the game um, where, like, there's a community chest sort of idea, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. It's like you basically, like, start a realm. I don't really know exactly if what this means, but I think a realm is like a server. So I think once yeah. they do co-op and, like... Um, uh, maybe even PvP. Like, you can share items through a chest, which is really cool. Oh, that's neat. Uh, which I don't think you've been able to do in, like, the Souls games. Like, you can't really share weapons and things like that, from what I remember. Um, I will say, though, I do feel like with the gameplay, maybe, like, and I know it's early access. They're probably going to work on this. Like, the onboarding, like, the teaching of how to do things, where to find things could be a little bit better. And maybe it's it's very similar to a Souls game in that way because it doesn't tell you a lot. But, like, where should I go to upgrade my gear and my weapons? Uh, like, should I even be in this area right now? It's pretty open-ended. There were certain areas I was, I was level 7 in, but I was killing things, and they were dropping level 11 items that I couldn't wear. So I was like, I guess I shouldn't be here? Like, I didn't know if I should even be there. So I think that's definitely something they can improve, but... It was really just like a, a you know, I, I feel like the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to the um, the gameplay here. I'm just looking through my my notes as well. I did put in all capital letters, fuck heavy weapons. They suck. <laughs> dexterity, wep- dexterity weapons all day. And that was because I, I hate heavy weapons in Souls games because they're so slow. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing in this game. You know, you have different weights for like how quickly you can roll and things like that. Um, and also based on your armor weight. 
Um, and I, it, like the game, you don't really have a choice in the beginning, you know, like you have to use a heavy weapon, I believe. Um, so I was really struggling with it. I finally found like a quicker weapon or I bought a quicker weapon. Um, and that was great. But now of course the game gave me like a legendary heavy weapon. It's clearly <laughs> my best weapon. I'm like, I guess I have to use this now. So now I'm, I'm, I'm using that again. It's like this giant, um, sword that it's actually pretty good, but I just hate how slow it is. So, uh, but it's very much like the Souls games in that way, too. If anyone has any preference, I know there's, like, the Dex bros out there that love the dexterity stuff or, like, the magic sort of stuff. There's range weapons, things like that. It's very much like a Souls game in that way as well. So, yeah, it's – it's honestly, like, the game has surprised me so much uh, just from the gameplay because I didn't realize how similar it would be to a Souls game. Um, so yeah, overall, I mean, that was pretty much all my notes on the gameplay, but overall, I really enjoyed the gameplay. It, it does the same thing to me, Tom, where I just like feel like I want to go back and like continue the story or try to beat that guy. Um, and the great thing too, is that when you defeat an enemy, they stay dead. Even after you respawn, Mm -hmm. that's not like the souls games. Uh, the souls games only certain like boss enemies basically don't respawn, but the smaller ones do. This one is like, all right, once you kill the enemy, they're dead. I guess until the next day and maybe new enemies spawn in that mm-hmm. in their place. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, really enjoyed the gameplay for this one, Tommy. Yeah, it's really sweet. And, you know, part of the other reason that I kind of felt myself getting sucked in is the story. Now, you know, I don't know the length of the story. I, I Like I said, I didn't get that far. I played a decent amount, but I didn't get that far. But I really like what it sets up, right? you are your character, right? Like this is, this is very much an RPG in that, that sense where you are your character. You, you, you kind of play this role of, of this kind of mysterious kind of person going to this Island. And I love the fact that it's so like, you know, Elden Ring and stuff like that. Like, and from what I understand the souls games, you're just kind of going around beating evil stuff. Right. Right. Like, I, I don't, I mean, that, that could be an overgeneralizations, but, you know, in this game, I kind of like that you're just on this island and you're like, it's like you versus them, right? And and they're, maybe you don't understand each other in a way. And you kind of want to get to the bottom of that or, you know, figure out what's going on in this island. And I, I really like that th- that setup alone really drives you to want to play more as, as like, you know, in tandem with the gameplay, because I was just like, okay, like I, I want to see more of this Island because I'm in this beginning area and I, it's just really cool. And these enemies are pretty interesting, but I want to see what other kind of enemies I'm going to run into because obviously there's something wild going on here, right? Like it's, it's like a, it's like a mystery in a way I felt like, and, mm-hmm. and that's really cool. And you feel like this kind of lone ranger, like almost like an Aragorn out in the, the wildlands or something like that. And it feels a lot like that. And I, I just really like that. I don't really know a lot about where the story goes, so I can't really comment on that, but like in terms of setting it up for you to like get invested in your character and what your character is doing, I think it really accomplishes that really, like, really well. Um, but I don't know if you can speak, yeah. to, I mean, cause you're a better player. You've obviously gotten further into the story than me. Is there, not that far. Oh yeah. I mean like it is very <laughs> tough. It's very hard game, but uh, yeah. you know, is there anything you can, you know, shed some light on if, if there's more to yeah. it than, than just the setup? Yeah, no, um, definitely. And I just looked up here too, like on how long to beat.com. It says the main story is five hours right now. That could just be cause it's early access that, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty, pretty short um, but also it's one of those games i think that just has that replayability as well from that system i was talking about earlier but yeah as far as like the story goes you know i'm i'm a guy that doesn't like to read a lot of dialogue all right in the game so i don't know all the ins and outs but the general idea um is you know like you mentioned you know you're kind of on this uh you get washed or you know get, you get on this island where you don't really know what's going on you start defeating all these bad guys and you do eventually find like a safe haven of a town um, called Sacra or Sacrament. Um, and while you're there, you kind of have um, these, I guess, it kind of has this like religious undertone in the game uh, where there's like these church, they, they say they're like, I don't know, they're like church going people, but they're 
they're clearly like evil. Uh, <laughs> there's, so, there's something going on with them, just the way that they're dressed and things like that. So I'm at a part in the game right now where like I've met them and they've they basically say that they're going to take over this town um, and like they say they're going to protect it and all that sort of stuff. Um, and now I have to go meet with them elsewhere. So I'm exploring new parts of the map right now. So as far as the story, I haven't like progressed too far into it. But what I will say, yeah, is that it um, it is interesting. It's got that, you know, uh, it's got that darkness that you kind of expect from a Souls game, but it does give you more dialogue. Typically in Souls games, you're finding a lot of the lore out through like, you know, these convoluted sentences and like digging into like the lore of items that you find. And I just don't like, it's just too much. And, you know, like half of the names of the people start with M. So it's just like (laughs) confusing to like figure out who is who. Um, So this game definitely does a better job of it. Um, The story also like, uh, this is maybe more on the sound part when we talk about sound. I think the voice acting is really great in the game. And it's actually kind of, um, it's made me pay attention to the story a bit more the more that I've played um, because there's more interesting characters that you come across and you can talk with like basically everybody. They might only give you like two sentences, but it's cool to be able to chat with pretty much everyone um, that you come across. It's not hostile. Um, so yeah, overall, like I think the story it's, it's, um, it's, it's easy ish to follow. I would say easier than a souls game, but it's also, um, I don't feel like it's like super original, like the, mm-hmm. you know, the story, like, uh, you know, I kind of like, all right, yeah, I get it. Like you're, um, you know, you're, you're evil. Um, I, I understand, <laughs> you know, or you're saying you're good and then you're really going to be evil, but who knows, maybe there'll be a huge twist. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean the story, you know, I'll, I'll pay attention to it, but it's not really something that like I'm I'm I don't remember anyone's names like I, I just I just kind of want to <laughs> go beat up some bad guys you know what I mean that's basically what I want to do but yeah no no knocks on the story though I would say yeah yeah no absolutely yeah. I mean I think the world building seems all right you know the, and yeah. I really like you know we'll get into the visuals now like and you mentioned like kind of like costume design, right? Like where these characters design is pretty awesome. It, it feels very, you mentioned like the religious undertones. It definitely feels very um, Spanish inquisition esque, yeah. you know, like sit like the, like Spanish pirates and stuff like that it has this like real, like almost like Spanish Spain. It just feels very Spain. I don't know why Spain, yeah. Portugal conquistador almost esque, you know, it's, yeah. it's very, very, like cool, like in that gothic kind of way, and then uh, you got to talk about like the texturing here because it is so cool. It feels like a oil painting almost. Yeah, it, it is unbelievable. Like, and I, I, I'm gonna, I was scrolling through and I just happened to see a comment somewhere, and somebody said, "No rest." <laughs> For my GPU, because <laughs> when I booed this up on Thursday, when it came up, came out, and I know they did some hot fixes since my PC was blaring, man. It was going <laughs> crazy. This game, yeah. I mean, obviously is a very beautiful game and has like a lot of stuff going on in it. It seemed like my PC, this is, goes into the performance today probably more, but my PC was working a little bit harder than it should have been. But since the hot fixes, it seems to be where it should be. But, oh, good. Yeah. but with, I have to imagine it's a lot of that, like texturing in the game and stuff like that, which is very, very cool. Has a super cool Gothic look and, you know, really interesting shadow like versus light here. And I don't know. And even like the weather felt like super really well done. So like, I was super yeah. impressed with the visuals here. I like the character design. They're all, all the humanoid characters are like super top heavy. It's like, they just <laughs> yeah, like they do shoulder presses every day. Like, <laughs> and then like, I mean, it's you have to say it, Like if you scroll over to make a, a female character, she's doing squats. Like, all this is <laughs> like, holy smokes. Like yeah. it is, is wild. I mean, Hey, listen, I mean, you got to yeah. be powerful to be beaten up baddies. So I understand, but it is funny. But like, I, I think that's like something that's gives the, the game a little bit more character uh, because it gives like your, your characters and like the other characters 
like other humanoid characters around you, this look, this, you look at yeah. it like, this is a no rest for the wicked character. Like it, there's no mistaking it. It's not like just a regular looking dude or gal run around. Yep. It's, it's a weird kind of like, <laughs> like in, if you ever seen league of extraordinary gentlemen, <laughs> When when Doctor Jekyll turns into Mister Hyde, like kind of looking <laughs> like that, uh, yeah. so. But I I don't know I, I I really like the visuals here. It's 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 stunning. It really is. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like it's it's this like I don't. It's again. It's like that. It's it's it feels new but familiar at the same time. Where like it's almost like three D two D because of like the oil painting kind of textures and like. When you're when you're you know talking with someone like in regular dialogue like their picture will just show up but then there's also like 3D cutscenes that are pretty well done along with the voice acting and yeah like the lighting is like incredible um, just like so many parts of the game have such great um, such great lighting and like particle effects and just like the over, overall like atmosphere of the game is is really well done I agree about the characters I actually when I was creating the character I was like trying to see if I could change that because I was just like this like I felt like I was playing Ark for those who like who've played Ark like people make ridiculous proportion characters <laughs> and it always like takes me out of just like I don't want like I just want a regular character but then as I was playing through the game I was like yeah this is I like that the characters look like this because this is like no rest for the wicked character and it fits well into the world like I it didn't like in the character creator you might think oh this is going to be like super noticeable like in the cutscenes and things like that but no it's not it's not really noticeable at all like it's just who your your character is you might have some silly uh headgear and things like that and i think that's another part of the the art that was really well done is like the the equipment that you get looks awesome um like i have i, I got a giant piece of headgear that's like um uh, it's like a big mushroom hat um uh, found that that was pretty cool and then I got another one that was basically like it looked like a torture device that was like on my head. It's just as the giant piece of wood. That is, so you're just like running around. You're like, how is this a helmet? Like it does, <laughs> it's not protecting anything. But it was just cool, like you know, to kind of have these different sort of um, uh, different different sort of pieces of gear that you're probably like not used to seeing in other games. Um, it also was giving me like uh, for those who've played like Trine back oh, yeah, in the day. Yeah. It was giving me like trine vibes of like that's kind of like the way the atmosphere feels is like kind of dark, but with this really great lighting that like illuminates the area that you're in, except for like the kind of the corners, I guess, if that makes any sense. Uh, but yeah, overall, like uh, I thought the the art was fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's just it, it's it's also I think they did a really good job with also like the the items that you have to pick up. There are certain like items like potatoes and like herbs and things like that that you have to pick up. There's like a little sparkle on those items. They could easily get lost if they didn't have that. They could easily get easily get lost in the rest of the landscape. But they did a good job kind of singling those out a bit. I do think maybe they could be a little bit easier to see, but um, you know I'm I'm fine if they left it as is. Uh, and then yeah, also just like the. The latest weapon I got has a, you know, a giant sword, legendary sword, has like this really cool, like it's a like a dark matter kind of effect on it. So when I slash and, and do all that sort of stuff, um, it just looks really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't I don't know. I think it's because it has some sort of effect on it um, where if it hits the enemy, like it'll deal like extra damage or something like that. But um, yeah, as far as like the weapon design goes too, I've seen some cool videos of people with like these really awesome like light light arrows like light bow and arrows i faced like some enemies that had like ele electric abilities things like that like all that art is really well done as well um yeah it just feels like a pretty pretty fleshed out game when it comes to the art you know like i could i could see like an mmo being in this style too like a, just a huge game i think it could work really well uh, but yeah they they did a killer job and also i mean it's the it's the devs of Ori and the Blind Forest. They're really good at lighting. They're mm -hmm. really good at like atmosphere, right, in the game. So no surprise here, really, at the end of the day. But um, still, killer job with with the art for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and yeah, we didn't mention Ori at the beginning, but like, yeah, Ori and it just right. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. So yeah, and yeah. and it continues on into the sound, right? And 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 the music here, like the score you know is is beautiful feels 
very gothic, very, you know, kind of spacey in a way. Gives gives your like character some room to breathe. It's not overbearing. And then, you know, the sound effects and the voice acting are pretty incredible as well. Right. You mentioned yep. the voice acting, the voice acting is really good. And then like just like really cool sounds, right? Like when I was firing off fireballs with my staff, I was like, that's awesome. I mean, this, this is so cool. And like, I think it's a, it should be the bare minimum. Some games just don't get it right. Like I, it's, yeah. it's, that's just the, the reality of it. Like, I think it should be easy to get the right sounds with what you want to do, but sometimes it doesn't happen. It's happening here. I wouldn't say it's like, holy smokes, that's the best sounding fireball I've ever shot in my life, but it sounds yeah. cool. And that's all I care about. Right. It It's not taking me out of the game. And that's like the most important thing. And, you know, even the weather effects, the waves in the beginning, the, the rain sounds great clearly a really well-directed sound design here so uh you know just kind of goes hand in hand with the visuals here they did a great job there and they, they kind of match that in the in the sound at least for me yeah i totally agree um you know like you said uh you know it, the sound doesn't take you out of the game which is means it's doing its job um so yeah i totally agree about like the music and just the overall kind of sound effects Something I just also wanted to point out, like kind of in addition to the voice acting, um, is they have this neat system. It's happened like a few times for me uh, where basically if I'm on like a main quest and I'm trying to find where to go, at least in this town that I was in, when I would walk by someone, they would say, like I was looking for this place called The Rookery, uh, and, and they'd be like, the rookery is that way. And they'd point and I, I'd pass that person. And then I'd like go around the corner and then there'd be another person. Oh, looking for the rookery. It's that way. And I'm like, what a cool, like, <clears throat> like kind of like to keep you in the atmosphere of the game, right? Like that's how you can give directions rather than having like a compass on the top, you know, or like a waypoint that I see. I mean, you can see a waypoint on the map, but you need to open the map. But if you stay within the gameplay, it's like these, I don't know if it happens everywhere, but it was happening when I was playing earlier. Um, and I just thought that was really cool, like, from the sound standpoint of just, like, uh, you know, they could have easily just had a sign there. But instead, they're incorporating, like, the uh, the villagers that live there, you know, to help you. They, they obviously would know where the rookery is. So, and they realize you're a new person. So, it fits into, like, the lore and everything as well. Um, I just thought that was what a cool idea. Like I, I, I would love that in other games, you know, of like, that's how you can find things is you kind of just have NPCs that just, you don't have to talk to them or anything. They just see that you're there and they just point you towards the right direction. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, I just thought that was really cool. Little, uh, little bonus there with the sound. They did a good job with that. Well, you know, it's actually, that kind of reminds me of something that I, I saw when I was playing that I really enjoyed and this is kind of the benefit of doing a top-down game. I think you get a lot of this in like Diablo and stuff like that too. But like where you can be in one room or one part of a village and see other NPCs interacting with each other in like the other side of a wall or something like that. And you got to get you kind of get the story of what's going on there. You can decide if you want to go through that door or not, right? And like interact with them, which I think is like a really cool thing like that you don't get when you're like third person uh you know maybe you can hear some stuff on the other side of the wall but like it's kind of cool to see it happening you're like there's like six enemies talking to that guy i'm not even gonna bother <laughs> they yeah, can they yeah. can bully him as much as they want so yeah no definitely and that's also another thing about the art just going back to that is like they do a great job of making sure that none of uh, the environment gets in your, like the way of your vision, you know, mm -hmm. like they, I thought everything, like some games, you know, uh, that we've played, it's like, it might take an extra second for like that building to disappear. So you can see where you are, you know, it just, it doesn't seem fully fine tuned this game. It was like super smooth with all that stuff. I, I never found like, as I was exploring, cause it is pretty open too. Like you don't have to stay on the path. You can climb up things. Like it's very much like Elden Ring in that way where you can just like, there were a few times where I was like, I'm just going to jump off this cliff into the water and see if I live. And like, you do, you could just swim from there. 
Um, so there's definitely some areas where, like, you're like, if I go here, will I even be able to see my character? And they do a good job of, like, hiding your, you know, hiding the objects that would be in your way uh, so that you could easily kind of see where you have to go. So, yeah, d- definitely, I mean, that has to do with the art, but props to them for, for getting that right because that's a super important part of these top-down games is making sure that, you know, there's no hindrances and nothing that's going to take you out of, uh, of enjoying the game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's going to bring us to the performance. I mentioned the no risk for my GPU. Uh, however, even when it was humming and dinging down there, I, I didn't really run into much issues. I wasn't really having a lot of problems with the game. Um, my, my computer has, uh, like, you know, some words to say about it, but yeah, that being said, I mean, it just sounded loud. That's, that's all I had these on. I just like, tuned it out. Like I'm playing yep. this game. I don't care if it just, if, if it blows up, it <laughs> blows up. But lo and behold, we're recording this podcast on this PC. So it works out. So, you know, yeah. I didn't really run into anything other than that. Maybe a couple drop frames when I first started, I think, but like that was, that was it. Yeah. Same. Uh, I, I didn't, nothing that was like taking me away from the game or being like, this is totally unplayable. Sometimes there were a few, yeah, a few frame drops, uh, maybe some weird like animations that would happen that I'm like, okay, they'll probably end up fixing that, um, you know, uh, in some hot fix that's coming up. But overall, I mean, for an early access game, I thought it ran better, better than some other early access games that we've played. Uh, so yeah, they, uh, they did a, they did a good job. There's definitely room for improvement. Like we said, with like the frame drops and making sure it works on everybody's hardware. It's not going to blow up their computers, um, but I, I do think overall, like the performance was good. I also did see just to, as a note, this isn't really like about the performance, but there's been a lot of people complaining. There's no key binds uh, yes, options, yes. uh, key binding in the game. Uh, that I, I know that's something that they're working on. Honestly, they recommend to use a controller for the game. That's what I use. I imagine yeah, that's, that's what I use. Well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know what the experience is like on mouse and keyboard, but I can understand the frustrations with not being able to rebind certain things. So just as an FYI, if you're looking to use mouse and keyboard, maybe use controller until they add custom keybinds uh, into the into the settings. But again, not related to the performance. Just just as an FYI, a lot of people keep complaining about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean. Uh, early access. It is what it is. Yep. Use a controller. I can't fathom playing this one on <laughs> mouse and keyboard, to be honest. But save, that, save. that's just me. Now, let's get to our final rating here. The main squeeze. Our ratings are as followed: best games ever, certified fresh juice, a steal. After that, get on sale. Beyond that, manager special, and then finally, spoiled milk games that we would not recommend to anyone. Maddie, how do you? Rate no rest for the wicked and early access game. All right, so I am gonna rate this, and this is this is subject to change because I haven't beaten the game yet or gotten all the way through it. I'm giving it a steal. All right, for now, and I'm I'm saying it could be bumped up. It's a pretty high steal. Could be bumped up to a certified fresh juice, uh, but in its current state, early access. You know, we'll, I know we talked about. Uh, potentially, like if, if this game you know hits 1.0 at a certain point, we maybe do like a re-review and see kind of how we feel about it being fully polished. So maybe at that point, I'll give it a certified, but I'm giving it a steal. Um, I think it's got a lot of great things going for it, um, but it also there there is a a little bit of a feeling of like la- almost like a not a lack of content, but just uh, maybe a lack of exploration in the game a little bit now again i haven't played through it fully um but there are certain parts where i'm just like okay i've already killed these enemies right they don't respawn back until the next day um so uh, some sometimes i'm just kind of running through the world trying to get back to where i was and i'm like okay like i just wish there was a way for me to like just go right back to where i was or maybe i respawn there you know things like that so i think they could do a little bit better of a job uh, with that, there's also some other things of like, I would love the ability to like pin quests. You know, I very often I'm going into my menus being like, what's my current quest right now? How many quests do I have? Like, just let me pin it to the screen so I can know, you know, where, what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, because there is, at least for me, like, uh, a little bit of like confusion sometimes with the direction in this game, um, where I'm like, I don't know which way I'm supposed to be going. If you look at the map, 
you'll see like the area that you're, you've, you've um, opened up, you've explored, and then you'll see a waypoint kind of in the black. So you don't really know how to get there. So for me, like, yeah, I, I like exploring, but I'm also, I found myself getting a little frustrated because I was just like, I've killed all the enemies here. I don't know where to go. And then I found that there was like a little crack through a door that I was supposed to go through that I didn't realize was there. So maybe that's user error or maybe, you know, it's early access. Maybe they can improve on that a little bit and just kind of give you a little bit of d direction or like have some more NPCs pointing in the right direction <laughs> to go, uh, whatever it is. So I'm giving it a, a pretty high steal that could move up to a certified fresh juice in, in the future. But um, what about you, Tommy? How are you feeling? Yeah, I think that I'm like probably like a solid steal right now. You know, off to a ripping start for an early access game, right? Like, yeah, this this feels very like not close to finish, but like if if this came out like this, right? I think people would still enjoy the hell out of it, right? And yeah. it certainly like a lot of work has been put into it. You know, would I have preferred this game to actually just like come out as a full game like down the road instead of early access probably that's just kind of what i prefer but i understand like getting people's opinions on it like you know there's a lot to this game that maybe they aren't familiar with right because you know ori is not like this game at all or this genre yeah. right so like this is this is new territory so it's kind of like some fact finding and and kind of figuring it out so I got to give it like a solid steal. Certainly has the potential to go all the way up to a certified fresh juice. I am a little bit worried about the five hour run run time uh, yeah. personally, especially for the price, but that could be just early access. I don't know uh, if it ends up being that at the end. I My rating certainly would be hard pressed to change, right? Uh, for yeah. the better, because I think that's a kind of short, right? Like, for what this is now if it if it's just a great five hours awesome but like i don't know i don't know that seems like not a lot but like you know maybe it's five hours for the main story a thousand hours for a hundred percent or something like that like it could just yeah. be something like that so with all that i i I'll be thinking about this game for a long time. I think it's it's very cool. Be keeping my eye on it. See what like the update and what they do to it. Um, so very very impressed with this game. Yeah, uh, excited to see what comes next for it. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and also just about like the story. Um, this is based on two people so far with how long to beat. So that might change. Two, only two people have submitted like how long it took them to beat the main okay. story. <laughs> so it could be different. But yeah, there's no data yet for like how long it takes to like be a completionist basically for it. Got it. Um, but yeah, I think like I think that sums it up really well for like the both of us. It's just like we're impressed mm -hmm. with the game, you know, like just going into it and not knowing it's early access. We haven't had a great experience with some other early access games. And yeah, just, just impressed overall. And um, I also agree, like, I would have liked to have this game be, you know, fully um, complete before purchasing it, specifically because it's a $40 game. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, I it just, that's a pretty high price for like an early access title because you're, you're risking a lot. You don't know if it's going to be good or not, but luckily this one paid off. Um, so I, I do think it is worth the money. Um, now after playing it, but going into it, I was like, oh man, like we didn't get codes for this game. Yeah. I hope, I sure hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, luckily it was. And I, I, I do think yeah. people would be very happy with their purchase if, if this is the kind of genre they like and, and it's a, a new spin on it. So, um, yeah. no rest for the wicked. What a game. No rest for the what a game. Game, we do have listener questions. We do we are not resting on our listener questions. And the first one comes yet again from Capolo. Who asks, What's your favorite video game collectible you own? Great question. So uh for me, first thing I go to is I uh I'm a big Gears of War fan, for those who don't know. Played the games all growing up, just love them. And back when Gears of War 4 was coming out, whenever that year was, uh, I was streaming. Uh, I streamed like the E3. Um, and this, this story will get to a point at, uh, you know, at the end. Uh, I was streaming E3 
uh, back when E3 existed, and they did the reveal of Gears 4, and I was, like, losing my shit because, like, I didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, and then I found out that, like, the developers were hosting a contest. Uh, I found this out, like, a week after. Uh, someone had linked it to me. Uh, they were hosting a contest uh, on their forums for, like, reactions. And whoever, like, you know, had the best one, there was, like, top three, they got prizes. And I literally had an hour left to submit. I found out about, like, right before the deadline. I submitted my video, and I just, like, kind of forgot about it. And the next thing I know, I won the whole thing. Um, and I got out of it. Um, I got a s signed copy of Gears of War Ultimate Edition. So it's the remastered Gears of War 1, which I love. And it was signed by the developers. Oh, that's cool. And, like, that's probably, like, the coolest. I, I still have to get, like, a case for it so I can, like, put it on the wall. Um, and I have, I still have like the note that they wrote me of just like my username used to be chaos spoons. Cause I was in like a gears team or whatever. So it says that on there and all that stuff. Um, and I was just like that, like what a cool, I just like, I had no idea that that was even possible. I just, you know, someone sent it to me, sent it in right before it ended. And I freaking won and got the, that collectible. So that's probably my favorite one because of the story and also because it ends up being gears of war being a game that I love. So yeah, that's going to be it for me, Tommy. It's a good one. That's, that's pretty, I didn't even know that. Jeez. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Actually, I have it, uh, um, right here. Let me show the viewers. Go, oh, go, no. go. I will fill the air with my timber. There it is. There he is. Let's see. I'm it. back. Sorry. So here's the note. It says like chaos. Congratulations. Chaos spoons on the win from the coalition. Jack Felling, who used to work there. And I've got Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And it's signed by the Very developers cool. right there. Pretty cool, yeah. And I've never opened it either because uh, I already had the game. But, <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, super dope. And, like, if I ever – I'm always thinking, like, if, if we're ever going to, like, Comic-Con or whatever – and there's like someone from Gears of War there, like I'll bring this and they could sign it, you know. Yeah. Um, but haven't haven't um haven't done that yet, but I will. But anyway, yeah, there it is, always sitting behind me during the pod. There you go. That's yeah. a cool one. That's a cool one. Uh, mine, I don't really have a ton, but I did manage to track down the Loop Hero soundtrack on vinyl, uh, yeah. which is which is dope. First of all, that soundtrack's awesome. Second of all. Uh, it's a very cool looking vinyl and I love records. I love, you know, listening to stuff on analog and that is just a really cool experience and it's just really cool. It's just cool to have, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of other stuff. Most of it's like flesh and blood stuff, obviously, but, and like movie stuff. I have a lot of movie stuff. Like I, I'm looking at an army of darkness, uh, poster here. I have, this is pretty cool. Um, it's not it's not video game related, but I don't know if it's stuck up there though. Let me see. Okay, all right. He's all right. getting it. it is. He's going up. He's we got, got Star Wars, but it's Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is amazing. It's Dude, so Newman? cool. <laughs> Newman is is like uh, Jabba the Hutt or, or like the Emperor yeah. in that one. I forget if it's. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be New Hope, so it's got to be Jabba, right? I'm not yeah. sure. Um, but. Yeah, oh I God. I saw that, so I actually bought. Amazing, that's probably gonna fall at some point. Um, I I was in Colorado and like Boulder, and I saw that in like a poster store, and there was two of them. I bought two. I got one for myself and one for uh, my buddy Flake, who's you know from the the Flesh and Blood world, the trading card world, and his two favorite things in the world are Seinfeld and Star Wars. So. I was just like, I got to get it for him. And obviously I had to get one for myself as well. I was like, it's too yeah. cool, too cool. But Out of all the things you were going to show, I did not <laughs> think it was going to be that. At first I was like, oh, it's Star Wars. And then I just seen Newman. I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> not Star Wars. <laughs> that's yeah. great. That, that's awesome. I'll have to post, I'll post get... What was that? Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, I was just going to say, what else would you want to be Seinfeldified? If you could choose another oh, movie closer. God, I mean, I have the Army of Darkness one here. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably, uh, you know, it'd be cool to see like a, uh, I love the lighthouse too. It'd be kind of yeah. cool to see like Jerry and Kramer, like kind of being like the, you know, Willem Dafoe and Robert uh, Pattinson and that. Um, but 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll post a picture of that in the in the Discord. You check out the Discord. You can see a picture of Seinfeld Star Wars. But yeah, the, yeah. the next question comes from R Carp Eleven, who asks, "What is your favorite podcast that isn't your own?" Uh oh. Uh, definitely. Uh, Fresh and Buds. Uh, has got to be the number one. No, I I. I don't know what you guys are talking about on that show. <laughs> uh, don't play it, but that is a great one. Definitely check it out. For me, I, these days I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, just because I I work from home now. So like typically I listen to them in the car, like going to work, coming back, and then even at work, just so I could not hear coworkers and all that sort of stuff. But um, I would just say kind of funny games daily is probably the one I still listen to. They, uh, five days a week, they're going over gaming news. I actually, I kind of listen to it now also for like research for this show in case they may mention anything indie related. I'll like make a note of that. Um, so yeah, kind of funny games daily, really great, you know, uh, kind of funny is huge. They, you know, you guys might already know them, but the really great company. It makes a lot of great gaming content. Um, and, uh, yeah, really enjoy their like daily gaming show. I don't, there's not a lot of daily gaming news podcasts. Um, so they were the first one that I ever found and, um, you know, I've been listening to them off and on for a few years now, but yeah, probably that one just cause it's the only one I occasionally listen to these days. But what about you, Tommy? I know you listen to a good amount of them. I listen, I used to listen to more, uh, lately it's just been more music, but like I, the one that has been consistent for like eight years I've been listening to every week is Tuesdays with stories with Mark Norman and Joe list. They just have the best chemistry ever. And the, the ridiculousness of their stories from the road and even their one-off comments that I definitely cannot repeat on this podcast or any other podcast (laughs) are pretty incredible. And it's just so funny. I just, like their the combination of both their senses of humor really tickle like both sides of my brain because they're very different but also work together. It's like uh, it's like uh, peanut, peanut butter and jelly. And, yeah, I was gonna say peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yeah, savory is <laughs> sweet, you know. So yeah. yeah, it's a great podcast. You know, it's not for everybody, but uh, it's certainly for me. But thank you for asking, our carp eleven. Yeah, I I also feel like these days too, like I'm probably listening to more podcasts on TikTok than anything, just because of the clips, you mm-hmm. know. I see a lot of the basement yard. I know mm-hmm. um that's a popular one. Bad friends, you know. I, I see a lot of clips on there. You send me clips of like Todd Glass oh, uh, yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Not uh, not uh from his podcast, but I know he has one. Actually um, he stopped it. Yeah. He officially ended it. Which oh is really crazy okay. after like ten wow. years. Um, wow, you yeah. you would think he would have endless content for that? Yeah, that, well, I think <laughs> I think he just uh, you know he's old, he's getting old, he just wants to retire or something. I don't know, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. gosh, that'll uh, be us one day. Yeah, in twenty yeah. years. But uh, like that brings us to the rec room where we recommend something that perhaps isn't an indie game, and then we're gonna say our goodbyes, folks. What do you have to recommend this week, Matt? Yes, so I actually have an indie game to recommend. This is a demo. I actually saw this on TikTok. For those of you out there, uh, and this is going to be a specific audience, that love Call of Duty Zombies. If you played World at War, Black Ops, you know, any any of those, there's this game on Steam called Skr Ritual, uh, S-K-E-R Ritual. Mm-hmm. It's twenty percent off right now. It's a twenty dollars game. They have a free demo. That's what I played. Download the demo. It is finally the zombies community has been asking for a standalone game from Treyarch or from some of the larger developers that make zombies, and no one has really done it. And you know, I'm sure there's financial reasons for that. Um, but these this game, Skur Ritual, was made by five indie devs, and they decided, hey, we're going to go ahead and do it. So it is a round-based zombies game, very similar to Call of Duty Zombies, with some new systems built on top of it. It's got very positive reviews, um, and it came out on the 18th, same day as No Rest for the Wicked, and I've seen it all over my TikTok feed, probably because I've seen you know zombie stuff on there, but... Definitely recommend checking it out. It's solo or co-op. I think the demo is only solo. Um, they've got Easter eggs built into it, just like Call of Duty Zombies. Um, there's, like I said, some some new systems in there that make it a little bit more like roguelike which is kind of cool. 
Um, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And it's 20% off right now for 20 bucks, normally 25, I guess, um, until April 26th. So, you know, maybe I'll end up picking it up, play some with the boys, something like that. We've been itching for a little bit of zombies action and this one seems like, like a good one. So yeah, that's going to be my rec for the room. Hell yeah. I have to tell a couple of my buddies about that one. They, they love Call of Duty zombies. So uh, yeah, that one seems sweet. Now, my recommendation is a song by someone called Tommy Richman, not to be fused by with Tommy Fresh. Uh, this song is called Selfish. It just came out a couple days ago. It popped up on my TikTok algorithm, and I was like, what is this? This sounds awesome. It's very... Super hip hop beat meets 80s funk, like Prince vocals. Okay. It is so cool. I don't know. I was I was loving it. A lot of his other music is, is really good too. And there's there's one that he keeps teasing that people are mad that he hasn't released yet called Million Dollar Baby, which also sounds pretty sweet, but I don't want to recommend something that you can't listen to yet. But Selfish is, is a bop. It's a banger. So I would uh, check yeah. that out. Check that out. So, song of the summer? Who knows? Song of the summer, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, also, I just had one. I'll definitely have to check that out, too. Uh, sounds right up my alley. Um, one other thing that I just remembered that I, I'll just slip into the rec room as well. Conan O'Brien must go. If you guys haven't oh, checked out this it. new show from Conan, yeah, he's he basically it's a travel show with Conan. He's an idiot. Uh, he goes to Norway, uh, Ireland, Thailand, and Argentina in the first four episodes. Hilarious. Just like, it's like a 30, 40 minute show. Just hilarious. And for whatever reason, it was giving me like mystery science theater vibes of like the type of comedy it was. Oh, okay. um, because he, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's just so absurd. Uh, some of the stuff that happens, and he he just makes me laugh a lot. So I, I'm just slipping that into the rec room. Slip Check out in. Conan O'Brien must go. Don't know what streaming service it's on, but it's 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 pretty funny. It's good. Oh, it's on Max. Sorry, that's what it's on. Max. Max. Yes, Max. Maximilian. Um, yeah, it does that does look good, and Conan's hilarious. So I'll probably be watching yeah. that. Uh, yep. that's gonna do for the show, though, folks. Thank you for checking it out. You can continue to find us on all socials at Fresh Juice Pod. That's the best way to just support us. Check out the Discord. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Fresh Buds Pod. I have another podcast called Fresh and Buds where I talk about the game Flesh and Blood Trading Card Game. Uh, it's awesome. I love it. But I also love indie games. So, wow, isn't that crazy? I love two things and I have two podcasts. Uh, wow that's crazy i mean i love more than two things but i talk about two of the most i guess yeah. I, I, my fiance she's great at least too. two she's cool yeah. um but yeah those uh those are where you can find me where can people find you yeah if you want to find me at maddie gorm g-o-r-m on all the socials i've been streaming a bit on twitch and youtube uh, playing some Once Human, which is a, another indie game, survival MMO. It's been a lot of fun. Also, just want to give a shout out. We broke 100 followers on Twitter. Let's Fresh go. Juice Pod. So thank you for all the support. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate you sticking by and listening to the episodes. 30 episodes in so far and still feeling good, still excited about you know what we're what we're playing and next week we've got a jrpg that we'll be playing so be on the lookout for that because that is not my forte in the slightest tom <laughs> got a little bit more experience but we'll see how that and goes. it might be a little controversial maybe a little yep. ai involved in it who knows <laughs> a little tease for Whoa. next week but until then stay fresh you juice heads 